My name is Kathleen King and I'm a medical scientist. Um, I also am a volunteer chair of the Endometriosis Association of Ireland. I'm Breda Queeley. I was diagnosed with uh, von Brilbrands at the age of 35. Well, my name is Maureen Busby and I'm the founder of PCOS Vitality. And I was the child in the family that was delicate. Reason why? I was getting all these nosebleeds. I started to experience um, very painful symptoms um, from my very first period and I also experienced very very heavy menstrual bleeding and at the time that was like when I was 12 I didn't really know that that was unusual. During my teenage years I had a very very heavy periods nobody took any note of them I didn't because I presumed everybody else was the same it was just that uh, menstrual problems were something that weren't discussed often. So I self-diagnosed at the age of 14. Um, I had a medical textbook in the house, which was my Bible. I actually diagnosed myself by reading about my symptoms in a medical book in Waterstones. I went along to my GP and tried to convince multiple GPs that there was something wrong. Um, and unfortunately, nine GPs later and nobody wanted to believe me. Um, I was too young, I was looking for excuses to get out of school or college. Um, when I asked to be put on the contraceptive pill, which was again a recommended treatment for symptoms at the time, it was put down as an excuse that I was looking for contraception um, without my parents' knowledge. So I went to my GP and said, and he said, look, yes, you seem to have a lot of bleeding and whatever. And he said, look, my advice to you is have a baby and it will start it off. And the first time I went even to get the blood tests, I was told to come back again because Friday afternoon wasn't a good time for, um, for doing the tests. And I just, I came away, it had taken me a, a lot of courage to go in the first place. And I came away very disappointed and I felt dismissed. And I do wonder, was that just because it was a menstrual disorder or to do with women's health? My own situation as well as, as other women, when you report symptoms like bowel issues, um, bowel incontinence, pain with urination, um, you know, passing blood maybe with bowel movements, painful sex, don't even mention that to a GP because they'll just <laughs> hide in the chair. Um, you know, again, it's suck it up and get on with it. Um, that's a very crude way of, of sort of putting it, but that's how you're left coming out of your, your appointments. And it's devastating, it really is. Anytime I had a tooth extracted, it took two weeks before I could eat properly. That's not an exaggeration. Three dentists in my life told me, sorry, uh, I don't want to treat you again. So you walk out, where do I go if I have another problem? And I pleaded with the GP here to send me for a referral to a gynecologist. She wrote the referral letter and she put on the end of it that she was happy that there was nothing wrong with me, but she was entertaining my request. And I was in the chair probably about two, three minutes and just given the symptoms straight away, he was like, yeah, you have endometriosis. We'll confirm it with surgery in two weeks time. When the surgery did go ahead, he stuck his head around the curtain and it was two thumbs up after the surgery. He was like, yeah, there's loads of it in there. I've never been told, you know, to keep an eye on the bleeding or, you know, to seek help early. I had to go privately, but it's the game because I'm aware of it. I really feel as though I've had to become my own doctor um, and self-educate and self-research. Uh, I uh, had a perforated ulcer. Ended up in hospital, blood transfusions. I went into hospital the 14th of December and I came out on the 5th of January. I got a horrific hemorrhage of a Saturday evening. Taken to hospital, uh, blood transfusions, Saturday night, Sunday, couldn't stop it, had a hysterectomy on Monday morning. Got a hemorrhage again. There was still nothing. I still had no blood test. Nobody investigated it. Nothing. The other thing that's still, I'm still shocked by, you know, like even maybe last week or so, a woman would say to me, what is PCOS anyway? I was just told I have it. And I'm thinking, you know, this is 2020. 
I, I, I just, I just, it's incredulous to me that this is still happening. So I was sent to the hospital to have a blood test done and I was diagnosed with von Willebrand's at the age of 35 in May 1983. So you think in, in 20, well actually 32 years since I started my, my periods and since the onset of my symptoms that things have changed dramatically. But we don't know a huge amount more about endometriosis. We don't know what caused it. Um, we still don't know what is a definitive gold standard treatment. And we're talking about a disease that has been around since about 1935 and we still don't really have a proper um, treatment for it, a licensed treatment for specifically for PCOS. I would say you just have to sit there and say no, I'm not leaving until you do this, this, this. And I think because of the weight issues that a lot of women with PCOS feel they're to blame for the disease, and you're not. Everyone deserves good health care. Well, I think the first thing I would say to anybody who suspects they have endometriosis or who, you know, is maybe not receiving the treatment that they feel is beneficial to them, get a second and a third and a fourth opinion and come to an organisation like the Endometriosis Association of Ireland or speak to another advocate um, out there who can help you with some of the scientific information that you can take to your doctor and maybe discuss better treatment plans.